Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Luke 90 Bear, aka Luke Book Bear. And tonight I want to talk about and discuss mining Bitcoin, whether that be Bitcoin BTC or Bitcoin Cash BCH, with just a small amount of hash rate or one mining machine, two, three, maybe even four or five mining machines. Which makes more sense to mine? If you're thinking about in terms of pure profit, uh, if, if you're putting aside any ide ideology you might have about, you know, you, maybe you're a big proponent of B Bitcoin BTC or maybe you're a bigger advocate of Bitcoin Cash BCH. You know, maybe you think one of these is more in line with the original intent of Bitcoin or the real purpose of Bitcoin, peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. So putting all that aside, any ideology, just pure profit. Which makes more sense to mine? And again, if you've got a small amount of hash rate, well, I'm going to try to make this video as concisely as possible, as simply as possible, and as quickly as possible. So first, you're going to need to mine on a mining pool. And this would even go for if you, if you have a large farm, even if, you, if you've got a, a, a garage full or, you know, even a small building full of mining machines, you're still going to need to mine on a mining pool, at least for, B, at least for BTC. And generally for BCH also. So we're over the pool now. This is one of my favorite mining pools. I have mine on others also, and I do. But this is the bit, uh, pardon me, btc.com pool. So over at pool.btc.com, I'll link it in the description. Now over here you can mine Bitcoin BTC, you can mine Bitcoin Cash BCH, Litecoin, Ethereum Classic, and a couple other coins. They also have a hash rate calculator for, you can estimate your profit. Now over here, there's a couple different payout methods. We're gonna focus on the 20, every 24 hours is a payment called FPPS or PPS. Uh, but for the purpose of this video here, it's going to be a, and it's, it's, this is how it works at, the, at, the, at this pool and many other pools also. They're going to pay you every 24 hours regardless if the pool finds a block, they're going to pay you anyway. And they're going to pay you essentially, or to put it simply, they're going to pay you for each terra hash you have. So let's just do a quick example here in the, in the hash, hash rate uh, profit estimation. So one terra hash is going to come out to be... In, in a market value of US dollars or American dollars, you're going to make seven cents every 24 hours. They're going to send these Bitcoin cash to your wallet. Now, let's check out BTC. This, this was BCH. Now, let's go over to BTC, same page. We'll just scroll up a bit so it open up a new window. So, one hash, one terra hash, you're going to make seven cents every day. So, it looks to be about equal. Now, I will say these are rounded numbers, so one of these is a bit more. So one of them is seven something and one of them maybe, well, I think they've got to be at least seven, but one of them is probably a bit higher. So let's do a real world example. What I mean by that is an, an ASIC mining machine nowadays that which will still make profit after you pay for electricity. And I think you will need at least the S17. This, this is what I, off, off the top of my head, I could be uh, maybe some other machines also. But And we're talking about Bitmain ant miners. There are some other companies that make who produce or manufacture ASICs also, but let's go with the S17 Bitmain Ant Miner. Now the average hash rate is going to be up and down all day, up and down, but average is about 56 tera hash. So if we're looking at BTC, we are going to make every 24 hours, the market value at least in US dollars, $3.78. Now let's take a look over here at BCH again. Let's put in our same mining machine, or the hash rate that mining machine can produce. 56 tera hash every day they're going to pay you three dollars and 69 cents so what's the difference here now let's see so you're going to make nine cents more if you mine btc every 24 hours you're going to make nine cents more or this is the market value at least this is the amount of btc they're going to send you right here that's going to go directly to your wallet you're not not your pool account or anything like that it's going to go to your wallet at least on this pool now, other pools they're you know they have their own payout methods Although, generally speaking, there's two payout methods, but I don't want to make this video any longer than it needs to be. So, now at this point, you might think you might think to yourself, okay, Book Bear, thanks so much for the information. I'm going with BTC because I'm making nine cents extra every 24 hours. I'm going to be a millionaire. Thanks for your help. I greatly appreciate it. Well, something else you got to take into consideration. Well, a couple of things, but the most significant or most important that you should take into consideration is Later on, when you go to spend these these BTC or these BCH, the transaction fee. 
And again, this, this video is focused on small monitors. You have a small amount of hash rate. One machine, maybe three, four, five machines, maybe. But maybe just one machine. When you go to sp spend these transactions later on, you're gonna have to pay a transaction fee. Now, unless you're just gonna sp you're, you're gonna spend three bucks, then maybe it's not a big deal. Although on BTC it can be. For example, you go to spend this three well, let's just call it four bucks around it to make it easy, a little bit more simpler for purpose of the video here. Say it's four bucks. If you're gonna spend that four bucks, okay, well maybe even if the transaction fee is a dollar. Maybe you think, well, I don't care. I'm still gonna spend three bucks today. Um, you know, I, who, who cares? But thinking more realistically, you probably aren't. And especially if you're thinking long term, or you know, like you want to save your BTC because you're gonna you're gonna be a millionaire. Now, or if you're just gonna buy, let's say you want to buy a router. Let's just give an example, a, a common example. You want to buy a high or a relatively high end router. Maybe it's gonna cost you just under 200 bucks. Let's say I say, well, I don't want to give a specific brand and model, but a nice router maybe it's 197 to 198 bucks let's say so you're gonna need 200 bucks and it, we're talking about the market value now 200 bucks worth of Bitcoin BTC to buy it. and you're making four bucks a day so let's say okay four goes into 25 times so that's five 20 goes into 105 so you got 25 to 200 you need you need 50 of these transactions here now I'm not saying that the pool is not going to charge you a transaction fee, at least the, big, the BTC.com pool. Pardon me, I'm trying to talk fast to make this kind of speed the video up. At least the BTC.com pool, as far as I know, if last time I checked, they don't charge a fee to, to, for them to send you a transaction. I mean, they're going to pay a fee, but also they send all the transactions in one big transaction. So, But you know what? The book bear is starting to get a bit tongue-tied. Luckily or fortunately, I have a drink real close by in hand at the moment. Pardon me, the book bear is now refreshed somewhat to some degree and ready to proceed. So every day you're going to receive about four bucks. You're going to need 50 of these. So in your wallet, you're going to have what is called 50 inputs. Now you may think to yourself, hold on book bear, you're starting to get inputs. You know, what? what and what's that got to do with anything anyway? Well, I'm going to use an analogy. It, it is similar or to some great extent to fiat. In, the, in, the, in in this sense each of these inputs is a is a bill such as a one dollar bill a five dollar bill and so on now example you go into a store in real life if you're buying a candy bar I don't know how much they cost because I don't really eat too many candy bars although they are good though but you know chocolate but uh, so I I do eat some chocolate from time to time but anyway <laughs> you know, a, a, a candy bar say it costs 40 cents um, for you know a cheap little candy bar at the gas station, that, that kind of you know, I, I I buy like these chocolates come in these, these packets at the uh, at the grocery store. They're um, like twenty bucks. But anyway, <laughs> back to the example. Here at the gas station is little little Snickers bar, something like 40, 40 cents. Well, you're not gonna take your one dollar one dollar bill and rip that into, into two fifths and say, okay, take that piece right there, and I'm gonna hold on to this. And no, you're gonna hand over your your dollar bill if you're paying you know fee up cash you know paper money you're gonna hand over your one dollar bill the clerk is gonna hand you or the cash here is gonna hand you back 60 cents it is the same thing with Bitcoin transactions which you have received in your wallet when you go to spend those you have to hand them all over and hold you cannot divide them up in your wallet so in our example here when you're buying a router it costs 198 bucks well you need to send all these transactions all these inputs you've received and the last one you're gonna get some change on some change back but the point is though you've got 50 inputs now oh the power is going down you know what I better hurt speed this beat up a bit um well you know what let me no I can't grab let's see well the um okay inputs now if you're sending Bitcoin cash it's not a big deal but for Bitcoin BTC the inputs and the size of your transaction is going to cost you a good amount of money uh, every input you, you put into a transaction is it is increasing the, the physical size or the, or the digital size of your transaction in bytes that's how a Bitcoin transaction is measured as far as the size is in bytes so each input or each transaction you have received is an input and 
Bitcoin tra BTC transaction can be extremely expensive. Now, you know, I don't have the site pulled up right now. Oh, I should have pulled this up a little earlier on before I started this video. If you look at the most expensive transaction fees on both the BTC chain and also the, the Bitcoin Cash chain, you can look at them side by side. In real time, you're going to see BTC transactions for th this, this the fee itself. 500 bucks, 400 bucks, 100 bucks, 50 bucks, 190 bucks, 370 bucks. Now you look on the other side of the page, you're going to see the most recent and most expensive transactions. You're going to see one penny or, or one cent, five cents, one cent. Um, most of the time, under a penny, significantly less than a penny. We're talking a hundredth of a penny, a thousandth of a penny. Extremely inexpensive transactions on the Bitcoin Cash BCH blockchain regardless of how many inputs you have in your transaction you can have 100 inputs 200 inputs you're still paying uh, you, you might pay five cents you might pay less than a penny occasionally you will see a 20 cent transaction a 30 cent transaction a lot of those are people who have chosen to pay a larger fee or a higher fee depending on which software you know your wallet depending on the software you're using or your wallet there may be an option to set the fee manually at that point if you're a big proponent of Bitcoin Cash or you want to support the Bitcoin Cash network you may pay a higher fee to the miners which is okay to do uh, you could do the same thing on Bitcoin uh, pardon me BTC if you wanted to although the fees in general are going to be higher over there so this is this is a factor you, you should take into consideration you know, the book bear is getting tongue-tied again and parts let me get a drink got one in hand okay book bear refreshed again proceed okay so this is a factor to take into consideration when you're mining with a small amount of hash rate you're going to get all these inputs to your wallet every day now there are a couple other payment methods there's one we well, you know what the, this payment method here could potentially be worse depending on how quickly that they pull finds a block PPL on this right here is this one's called is basically what it means is they're going to pay you whenever they find a block where well, the pool may find several blocks a day at that point you're going to get paid several times a day whereas PPS they're going to pay you once every 24 hours regardless if they find a block or not also with PPL on this you the pool may not find a block for a few days so you won't get paid for a few days or as I said in another example you may get paid several times a day which is more inputs if they're paying right to your wallet like they do with, the, with this payout method here they may it, it still may run every 24 hours i don't mind uh well i have in the past but i don't remember how exactly they still pay you every 24 hours or they pay you automatically several times a day um now so yeah i think we're getting ready. well you know what there's one more factor to take into consideration it is the market price and the potential market price a year down the road or two years down the road or or whenever you're looking at speculation you're thinking oh bitcoin is going to be worth 100 grand next next week or next next month next year you're hearing about blackrock you know they're going to potentially one thing they're applying for etf for bitcoin you think oh this is going to this is going to push the price up we're going to the moon we're going to have million dollar bitcoin in two years i'm gonna be a millionaire well keep in mind when you're saving up your bitcoin your four dollars every day for the next two years you're going to have over 700 inputs in your wallet when you go to spend that unless you're going to spend three bucks every time which is also going to eat the fees up or eat, eat your uh, your bitcoin up either way you look at it you're paying a lot for transaction fees and you may get to the point where your fee is more expensive than all the bitcoin you've got in your wallet together so something you got to take into consideration even if bitcoin goes to a million bucks or a million dollars now you still may be okay you may who knows maybe you, who knows maybe if it goes to a million bucks maybe you only pay a thousand for fees or maybe not you could pay a hundred thousand for fees or maybe maybe more i mean we haven't seen a million dollar bitcoin also also you got to take into consider network congestion how many people are trying to send bitcoin at the same time bitcoin blocks are si are small uh, again we're talking about size of transactions well they've got to fit into a one megabyte block for btc or really technically it's four megabytes if you include uh well, something called SegWit and now Taproot. So, really, a Bitcoin BTC block is four gig. Uh, pardon me, me megabytes. They call it one and then three, 
three for the uh, block weight, which it's just fancy wording to get around it. It's four megabytes, but um, well, you know, I think we're gonna wrap the video up. One, the boat bear, I can just I can hardly talk at this point. I'm getting tongue tied and my mouth is dry. I'm getting parched. I haven't slept for a long time. I gotta go to bed. I hope this video was helpful, especially if you're a small mining. Maybe just getting into mining, you're thinking about buying a, a one mining machine. Well, you're probably gonna have to go with the S17 Bitmain Ant Miner if you wanna go with the Bitmain Miner, Ant Miner, I mean the ASIC machine. If not, there are some other companies out there that make ASIC mining machines. Do your due diligence because a lot of these companies, um, they're not selling real miners, they're fake mining machines, so watch out for those. We did a video about that a couple days ago. So keep your eyes open. You know, ask around before you buy one of these unheard of mining machines. And, well, thanks for watching. I hope, again, I hope it was helpful with the, when you make your decision about which coin you want to mine as far as B, uh, Bitcoin, BTC, BCH. And if you're thinking in terms of pure profit. Now, if you're thinking in terms of ideology, well, then by all means, mine the coin you support. I mean, right now, you're basically making the same amount of money. Uh, you will have to take into consideration the transaction. Part, part of me, I can barely talk. Take into consideration the transaction fees later on. But hey, at the moment, if you just think it is about the same price you're making or same market value you're making every day, so uh, you know you're free to do uh, to choose, of course. So anyway, thanks for watching the book bear. Gonna get some sleep here. Got some things to do in the morning, and then back tomorrow night with a new video, most likely about Bitcoin Cash. Thanks. Bye.